so this is the time for us to all stand up and stretch for a few minutes. If you have your cup of tea or water, you can take a cup of water or tea. And uh, just for a few seconds, actually, we're back. Uh, so I'm doing that here. So I'm up. So just make sure that your circulation is okay. You shouldn't be sitting for too long. Uh, it's important. So you can stretch on your seat as well. You can stretch your legs under your table and uh, make sure that your circulation is, everything is intact. So um, thank you very much. As we have uh, done that, we will now proceed to listen to um, a key constituent of the conversations today. In today's conversations, we're talking about development, we're talking about social media and new media platforms. We're talking about um, a key constituent, which is young persons who are going to drive a lot of development in society. We're talking about um, the, demo, the, um, democrat, um, the um, demographic dividend. Um, for instance, in Igbo land, we have a lot of young persons, energetic young persons, and many of them are on these social media platforms. So it's important to also hear um, a perspective, um, Prof having given us um, very deep insights. So are there other perspectives from some of the young persons or their representatives that may also enrich uh, this conversation? Uh, to have a, uh, to share in this uh, uh, um, insight of some of what Prof has already um, shared with us, we we'll invite um, um, Ike Akwarandu, Akwarandu, who is um, the uh, senior special assistant uh, to uh, the Governor Emeritus of Emote Emo State uh, on new and social media. So he would. Uh, for the next few minutes and a couple of minutes, share with us, um, uh, like just like an uh, intervention, I uh, rejoined that on what is the youth perspective, just you know, on some of what Prof has said and what does he think. So, um, is Mr. Um, Ike available? Okay, so, um, oh, great. So you're welcome, um, um, Ike. Uh, okay, you can tell yourself. So Ike is uh, also a policy analyst. He is the ED of Vocal Digital Media, um, and he consults uh, for organizations and, of course, individuals as well on uh, new media and other um, uh, digital media-related uh, um, activities and projects. So you're welcome, uh, Mr. Kwarandu. Um, the lecture has been fantastic. Uh, Prof raised a number of issues um, around education of the population using these platforms, around, around mobilization, which is an area I'm sure you are also very in tune with, and also technology transfers. So I don't know, what do you think about, uh, um, uh, what's your perspective, and what would you say young persons uh, have taken out of this lecture, and what can you share with us based on your own experience? You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, the moderator. Thank you. Good evening. Good morning. Depend, uh, 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 depending on where you are joining us from, this uh, for us in Nigeria here is evening. And I want to thank everyone for this very important uh, program and section, which uh, we started some hours ago. It's been very fruitful. And I must say that Prof has given a a very detailed analysis of why we are here today. And I would also go ahead to touch on certain areas. And uh, at the end of the day, I believe we will have uh, all it takes to, we will, we will find all it takes for us to be here today. Prof, uh, Professor Omolere was a great man who passed on some years ago, eight years ago in the service of this nation. Despite our time constraint, I won't continue this lecture without paying tribute to him. And I believe that uh, he made a standing part in the development of this country, both in his immediate communities and the world at large. Because Aole was a, a great man. He, he, he was uh, confident, I, I can't confidently say that in all his dealings, he was mindful to serve humanity to the end. I miss his brilliancy and modest way 
of life. And uh, I know wherever he is, he will be rejoicing that we are gathered here today on his behalf. The social media, as we have come to, the, the, this lecture, I must say, has been a driving force for positive change in our society. I say a big thank you to the organizers for this honor. I pray that greater wisdom and insight will be upon them to continue this well in the future. Introduction of my presentation, which I titled, What Ndibu Must Do With Social Media. The theme of this year's lecture, as we all know, is the role of social media in human cap capacity development and in the development of our place, the Igbo land, Alibu. I believe that this topic is very timely and I, it's important considering the time we are in, a time when digital technology has caused major disruption in every facet of life, a time when the big world has come, become very small, a time where the invisible internet connects the visible world and the, all of us are here. Look at us today, connected on Zoom from the comfort of our rooms. I think we have to use ourselves as the first examples of what social media has done for us, the positive aspect of social media. Yesterday, I was on a conference call with a friend and we had a WhatsApp video call with about two to three people and we all, we are seeing our environment. That is the benefit of social media and what it has done for us. Gone are the days when people must travel from here to other parts of the world for business transaction. In today's world, once you are certain that you are dealing with the right people, you can stay in the comfort of your room, your office, and do business transactions worth millions of Naira. For us as a people, the Igbo community must not leave her development to chance. We need to take advantage of social media to build a stronger and more developed community. Let me begin with human capital development. Human capital development is a process where individuals, organizations, and societies build on existing skills and knowledge of its members to drive a dynamic and flexible process of change. To us, it is strengthening the skills and knowledge of the Igbo people and communities in order to achieve social behavioral change as well as infrastructural development leading to a stronger and more progressive Igbo society. As Ndibo, we have known our we, have, we are known for our industriousness, resilience, hard work, intellectual prowess, and rich cultural heritage. We are no doubt the commercial hub of Nigeria. The life of the nation and despite the challenges we Faced as a people from the civil war till death, we have remained unbroken and very strong. According to Investopedia, as a computer-based technology that facilitates sharing of ideas, just like we are sharing ideas today, thoughts and information through building virtual networks and communities. It, it can take many different forms, including social internet forum, WhatsApp, etc. Let me say at this point that the historical background of social media, Nigeria as a whole was uh, in 1996 unable to afford the internet. It was at close to the year 2000 that operations of the internet became more visible in Nigeria. However, the South East have constantly been categorized as a unified people that have used these two to benefit themselves. A study found out that a larger percentage of the people that are on Facebook in Nigeria are actually the young people from the South Eastern region of Nigeria. Let us go to the role of social media in human capital development in the development 
Social media has become vital for social development in the world. And even Nigeria, and even social media has become in Nigeria, social media of informing. Ike. and entertaining. Social media Ike. has the capacity to engineer social change and reform. The immense power of social media was visible just recently and their voices to the answers and police brutality campaign that happened in Nigeria. We also saw, we, we also witnessed Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think the network uh, uh, challenges are also some of the uh, areas that will still have to be smoothed out um, with regard um, some of the advances we're seeing with social media. Um, so I'm sure I um, the speaker is not can very you hear me? clear. Can you hear so me? yes, you're you're back on. Um, I I can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Yeah. yeah so you weren't very clear, um, and uh, you know we are really interested in all that you know you are uh, sharing, the perspective you're sharing. Uh, so uh, you can go ahead. But, but we um, have to begin from the role of social media in human capital development and in the development. So just continue. Yeah. So you can continue from where you were. You were talking about the NSAS protest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you know, but we'd like you to wrap up so we can give the opportunity to others to also share. Uh, you know, perspectives uh, uh, before we wrap up. Yeah, thank you. So, so we saw the effects of social media during that time, and it was all over the place. Even the international community were able to know what is happening in our country because our people use social media to amplify those things. The Igbo community, therefore, needs to harness this power of social media in creative ways to ensure that human capital development of its people are captured. There is no doubt that the social media has its negative parts, just like Prof said. However, it is our duty to harness the positive aspects of social media and utilize it to engineer positive change in our name. The question therefore is, what are these areas that we can harness using social media? I, I, I'm going to begin from commerce. Commerce is a very important area in our name. The Igbo economy is one of the most vibrant economies in Nigeria, built firmly on the pillars of trade and commerce. We are known for our skills in trading and building sustainable markets. We have numerous successful businessmen and women all over the world engaging, in, engaging in import and export, as well as a thriving Emoahia and the Igbo Dibo system, which builds successive generations of business savvy men. As a people, we can utilize social media to expand our markets far beyond its traditional vicinity while gaining access to the markets all around the world. In today's world, the Igbo man selling electronics at Import Navy can market his products and get immediate buyers through social media platform. He can as well stay at a place using social media platform, order and receive goods worth billions of naira without having to move an inch. Social media has become an avenue to promote and market goods and services. As in the also, one of our greatest brands is ABA that we have in Abia State. ABA has over the years turned to an industrial hub where almost everything can be fixed. I make bold to say that made in ABA products today have gained more prominence through the advent of social media. It is glad to note that ABA at this moment is currently having a fashion show where all their products are displayed. And this is amplified to the world through the use of social media. Why this is commendable, it is not yet Uhuru for us. The government must do more to fortify our industry to be a stronger exporter of, of commodities. It is a fact 
to note that the footwears, clothes, most of which are used outside the region, are all products of uh, Aba in Abia State. Social media, if properly harnessed, can be used to attract foreign invest investment to Igbo land. This brings us to the need to strongly invest more in training our young people in courses like dig digital marketing, social media marketing, coding, search engine optimization, photography, cinematography, etc. Some of these very neglected areas have turned to the new oil blocks in our client today. Another area where we can harness social media is education and culture. Prof talked about education. Ndibu are known for producing intellectuals who go on to impact greatly on our society. Taking for instance, our professor Onwodere was a renowned university professor who made landmark contributions to science. Prof did not only impact academically, he became a positive role model to many young people. For the Igbo intellectuals, social media can be used as a tool to educate our people, most especially our youths. Also understanding the fact that we have many of Igbo communities who do not reside in Igbo land. Our culture seems to have been watered down. Today, young people of Igbo origin do not hear or speak Igbo language. Sadly, most of them don't have Igbo names. In some cases, it becomes difficult to trace the person's origin in the case of any eventuality. Why do Yorubas take pride in answering their names and the house has too? The Igbos are found wanting in name recognition. I remember those days why as a new intake in the university, I was going through the list of people that I gained admission with. I saw a name boldly written, Pascal Poshia. It became difficult for me to trace the origin of the individual who I had admission at the same place with. What this means is that if we continue to live in denial of our roots, in no distant time, we might find out that we have no culture to call our own. Our culture seems to be getting lost as the time progresses. Social media can be used to educate our people and reach and enrich our cultural heritage. In fact, I believe it's high time we engaged our young people, many of whom are tech savvy, to build social media platforms like Facebook for Igbo community. We can have websites, podcast groups, where we can train young people on how to speak Igbo language and as well to educate them about our Igbo culture and history as a people. Indigenous knowledge is very important to social, economic, and human capital development of the Igbo people. We must know that the knowledge is in the, the knowledge is in danger of disappearing if steps are not taken to document, preserve, and make it accessible to the current and future generation. Social media has provided us an opportunity to achieve this. And on this note, I want to commend some of our great leaders, notable among them, the President General of Ohane Zendibu, Chief John Nyangwode, the, the likes of Osita Chidoka, and other Igbo intellectuals who over time have used social media to educate the people and to inform the people about our cultural heritage. As the great literary icon, China Achebe posited, literature is the mirror of society. However, social media has become the mirror upon which literature breathes. I say this because all the contents produced on social media are all elements of literature ranging from visuals to audio to written literature, animations, etc. Literature has found life through social media. Therefore, the Igbo intellectuals must use social media to drive a cultural reorientation campaign. Our culture must not lose its sacredness because of the advent of social media. All hands must be on deck to ensure that the positive sides of social media are adequately utilized. Let me say briefly on politics. For, for, for now, the Igbo community is not alone. We are in a country surrounded by other tribes with their own unique agendas. We as a people have our unique attributes and we must benefit from them at this time. There is no doubt that social media is playing a very critical role in politics. Prof also noted this. 
leaders all over the world have social media handles across all platforms to engage the people. Here in Nigeria, we have a situation where most of our leaders still don't consider social media as a very efficient platform to reach out to the people. It may be surprising to note that a good number of House of Assembly members from the Southwestern region are all active on social media with their handles verified. Coming down to Alibu, it is quite important to realize that in the entire Southeast, I stand to be corrected, 98% of Southeast members in the House of Representatives do not have verified social media accounts. As we speak today, no Igbo governor has a verified Twitter account, and this is not progressive for us as a people. In the Senate, aside the likes of Senator Jekano, Okoracha, and the Senator Uchekwenife, and the very little percentage that is less than 5%, most Southeast members of the National Assembly do not have efficient social media pages. This ugly situation has not helped the region in human capacity building and has not helped in facilitating development to Alibo. One, they have deprived the people of quality engagement and feedback. They have also deprived the, the, the young people, a good number of media savvy young people employment. For me, this is a disservice to the Igbo land. Social media has presented itself as a tool to drive political participation, engagement, feedback, and also to provide gainful employment to the young people. The failure to run effective social media platforms by our people can be likened to the reason why most of them just barely six months after leaving office as governors, House of Reps, senators, most of them fed into oblivion. They fed into oblivion not because they are not talking, but they are not talking through the right platforms and no one is hearing them. We must encourage our leaders to take active participation in social media, not just for their political gain, but in order to drive a brand and voice which can be helpful to the development of the Igbo community. There are very few ugly sides of social media. It is instructive to note that the negative outside, uh, 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 aspects of social media are there and we cannot neglect them. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of our people were sending out fake information to the public. Some will tell you, give you drugs to take that are not prescribed by NCDC. We also saw the effects of social media during the NSAS campaign. We have people, we have people misinformed the public using social media. But in all this, we cannot throw away the baby and the bathroom. We must find a way to utilize the social media for the positive development of our region. Remember our people said that it means that in that same fish that has bone, that is also where you find flesh. So it is our duty as a people to pick out the flesh huh? and throw away the bone. Uh, uh. In conclusion, we must encourage our people to not only build capacity, but to not only show capacity, but also build capacity. There is a saying attributed to John Sack that good parents give their children both fruits and wings to fly. Social media, when properly channeled in the, in the right places, in the right senses, has given our people the wings to fly, and our people must utilize this adequately. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, um, Aparandu, uh, Ayaka Aparandu. Um, we really appreciate uh, your perspectives. Uh, um, you have touched on a number of uh, areas by bringing a personal, uh, young, and dynamic angle to the conversations this evening. Um, you uh, using your your practical experiences uh, from uh, various uh, responsibilities that you've heard. Uh, you talked about expanding markets using social media uh, and encouraging uh, the enterprise 
to actually explore social media as a means of deepening entrepreneurship and expanding uh, networks for commerce and uh, trade. We talked about uh, some of the interesting new things that are happening with um, uh, the, with ABBA, which is um, uh, one of the commercial uh, capitals in the southeast, and the ABBA Fashion uh, Week that is ongoing, and the sort of wonderful um, remodeling of the image of ABBA just this last week uh, because of um, the post that they've made on Facebook about the ABBA uh, Fashion Week that has been a huge success. So that's an example of the power of social media you know, and you know, where there is a product to sell. And we're seeing that we have a lot of uh, products, be it in uh, the markets or in commerce, be it in innovation or uh, production, be it in uh, 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 literature, or be it in education, our scholars, our politicians, um, with a need for more persons to understand that uh, there's more flesh in the fish than bones. So the impression that uh, we should all run away from social media, that um, it's dangerous. And I think another important point you raised as well is it's important for uh, persons to embrace social media when they have a voice or when they have a platform. So that even when the platform is not there, the persons who you have engaged will continue to engage with you. And that gives you, of course, you know, the opportunity to be relevant beyond even the expiry of your platform. So I think that's very important. And some of the statistics you shared are also very um, uh, important, and we need, to, they need, we need to look into them even after this um, uh, lecture. The fact that most of our politicians are absent on social media, uh, it's something um, interesting to, look, to think about, and whether that actually is having an impact on governance uh, in the Southeast region, I think it's... Uh, really something that uh, I'm sure the House will be interested in exploring. You talked about, of course, uh, key areas where we can drive capacity development. Uh, Prof had buttressed on uh, the key aspects of uh, capacity, capacity development and why it's important. You talked about key areas within tech, the tech space around social media, social um, uh, search engine optimization, social media marketing, digital marketing, uh, photography, cinematography, uh, etc. So that these are all interesting areas which you also call the gold mine. So I want to thank you very much, um, um, Mr. Ike Akwarandu, for um, giving us your perspective and for um, sharing with us this evening. Uh, we want to quickly uh, move uh, to invite uh, other members of uh, faculty here today, other members of uh, the team today to speak. Um, uh, Firstly, we want to ask if uh, His Royal Majesty uh, is here with us. Uh, we would like to um, hear from His Royal Majesty. Um, can you hear me? His Royal Majesty. Yes, we, His Royal Majesty, we can hear you. It should be open, sir, yeah. Oh, His Royal Majesty, you're, you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, Thank sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. We're happy to have you, and uh, uh, this is a rare opportunity uh, to be uh, in your midst and for you to be in our midst, and we thank you for joining us. Um, uh, we know that you have uh, a word or two for us. We know you don't, you may not uh, uh, speak a lot, but we know you can, uh, even if it's your blessing that you give to us, we would totally uh, be appreciative uh, of uh, such gesture. It's very majesty. Yes, thank you very much. Um, um, uh, it's my duty and my pleasure uh, to be on this platform uh, today. Um, uh, I've missed uh, previous um, occasions, uh, the annual lectures, uh, for reasons of being engaged somewhere else. Um, I, I don't need to expatiate on the, the, the human quality of Professor Celestine uh, O'Leary, uh, who were here to, um, to celebrate, actually, and uh, to remember uh, and... Uh, and um, and learn from his, um, from his own life's experience. Um, I've listened to the, the keynote address and the subsequent uh, speaker, uh, and uh, there's so much, uh, so much knowledge, so much insight, and so much uh, perspective in both, uh, both lectures. And I hope that um, uh, somehow they can circulate it, um, to, 
participants and other people uh, for our own further reading and learning. Um, just uh, briefly on the on the two on the two speeches, I think it was only yesterday I was reading um, an article on social media that basically says that Nigeria is um, is leading the rest of Africa on um, on uh, you know in, in, the, in the development of technology hubs, uh, obviously um, uh, IT uh, technology IT technology hubs. Nigeria is leading Africa. But also that Lagos is the main center, is the main center for IT development uh, in uh, in Nigeria. And uh, as we all know, uh, for those who are very much in the, in the IT development area, a large number of the players in that field in Lagos, Umuibo, they are our sons and daughters of Igbo extraction. They're in Lagos. Influencing Nigeria, influencing the whole world. Okay, um, which leads me to the concept of Akurona, which was uh, mentioned by the keynote uh, lecturer. Um, Akurona was the was the theme and the subject of my lecture some three years ago um, at the uh, 25th year anniversary of Anambra State. Um, uh, that was uh, the keynote uh, lecture for that uh, celebration. And the lecture was basically a call to Ndibu to diversify their investments homewards, that is, homewards uh, diversification, not to abandon their investments or pull out of their base in other places, but to begin to also extend to enable some of their knowledge, some of their expertise, some of their, their, their dexterity in, in, uh, in IT development, in business development, <clears throat> in academics, in professions, and whatever it is. See, um, if you look at it today, we have more capital investment outside the Boland <coughs> than Nanibu, Ibu Nibu, to take the whole world. We have more investment uh, abroad and out of Nanibu than Nanibu. We have more of our experts, uh, whether it's professions in the medicine or uh, academics or whatever it is, lawyers and so on, outside Nanibu than Nanibu. So we've got to begin to look homewards because uh, the picture that we saw three years ago is even worse today in Nigeria. I am a in Nigeria as a country, and we have to prepare ourselves for the eventuality. And my message then was, whilst we are talking about uh, devolution and uh, presidential project or whatever it is, Nibu should, uh, should uh, challenge themselves and to be able to survive under any scenario in Nigeria, the worst case scenario or the best case scenario, we have the capacity, we have the durability, and we have the, the natural uh, makeup. And that's what we should be driving towards. So even as Nigeria wobbles along, we should set a target that in 10 to 15 years, Anibo, Anibo, Ibo land should become the industrial power base of Nigeria, indisputably. Is doable and we can do it, provided we focus. And that brings me then uh, to uh, the the Castellesi Onwolere lecture series. I believe that this is the seventh in the series. And I believe that in the previous lectures, a lot of wisdom came forth, came forth as, uh, as is happening today. And my question is, what have we done with that knowledge going forward? How are we, or have we, translated talk into action? And that's my own message today. It will focus on uh, translating you know, all the knowledge that you can bring forth into action. And my suggestion that, that today's, uh, today's uh, event, following that, we should set up small group focus groups you know on various aspects of what has emerged today and hold workshops and seminars on how we can you know uh, dissect further and then translate into action you know um, going forward that's the only way we can pull our neighbor forward and my proposal is uh, that uh, we should set up 
uh, there should be an establishment of a Celeste and Omoli Institute for translating concepts into action. Well, that, that's not the name, but the purpose of the institute is that concepts should be translated into action uh, by in, encouraging small group discussions, seminars of experts, practitioners, and academics working together to move, take one issue and move it from, from concept to reality, concept to reality. That's my own suggestion. I think it would be a great honor to the great man that we're here to honor uh, today, and we've honored uh, consistently. And that center should ideally be set up in his homeland. And then so let it be a place for Mecca, uh, a place for, uh, for pilgrimage for, for all of us uh, once a year, at least for the annual lecture. And then for others, even more often a year, go there and be resident for a week and uh, discuss ideas and translate it into action. Thank you very much for the opportunity to make this little contribution. And I hope that uh, it helps uh, you know, the whole uh, effort. Thank you. I stopped so far. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, uh, His Royal Majesty, uh, the OB of uh, Onicha, for um, your fatherly uh, insights and scholarly insights, uh, and also for a way forward uh, with regard to uh, our meeting here today. Um, I think your uh, prescriptions uh, for us and you know suggestions as well to uh, move to establish an, an, a, a, a professor only uh, institute that would also help drive um, or translate uh, uh, concepts to action as we discuss some of these ideas and concepts is one that is very welcome and we must thank you that is something that um, we will look very strongly into as well so thank you very much uh, we would uh, like to invite um, our mother of the day, um, Yom Josephine Aneni, which is on the call. Um, we know that there's a perspective, um, an emerging, um, of course, perspective that affects uh, uh, our women folk and especially our young girls. Uh, it would be nice to hear from um, Nice to see if she's on the call. It would be nice to hear from her. Okay. So while we're waiting for her uh, to share some of her own um, insights, we want to find out if uh, the uh, most distinguished uh, uh, Senator uh, in uh, Abari Bay is with us. Um, a lot of ideas have been raised around the participation of uh, politicians and leaders uh, uh, on social media, uh, using the tool for engagement and also to uh, properly uh, guide the younger generation. And one or two examples of persons who are doing that uh, were mentioned. So it would be nice to hear uh, from the most distinguished uh, senator, if he's also on the call, um, his thoughts on these, uh, on these issues that have been raised. Uh, most distinguished, are you are you on the call? You can unmute yourself. Um. Okay, I think uh, it's having some challenges. So, um, so let's get uh, the insights from a uh, team of uh, Elomba uh, Media. Uh, Eluma Media has uh, emerged as a very formidable uh, online uh, media uh, platform and uh, it will be interesting to know what uh, uh, is his perspective with regards to uh, what has been raised today, what has been discussed today. So if I can hear Tim for a few minutes, uh, of course we all know Elumba.com is a very uh, popular media, of course an investigative journalist and journalism uh, uh, platform as well. Tim, you're welcome. Um, commit yourself so we can hear from you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tine Um I feel actually delighted to be here. In fact, um, 
when I was uh, when you were reading out the, the profile of the distinguished guests who are here this evening, I I was a kind of I felt like an antelope in the midst of elephants. I got afraid, uh, hoping that I won't be trampled along the line. But having said that, I am very delighted to be here, and uh, thanks to everyone too who have made our time to join in this um, in this occasion. As you can see from the topic of the day, the role of the social media in the development of the Southeast, it goes to show that uh, social media has, has and uh, remains a formidable topic in our everyday life. Um, let me start by saying that if you have not been harassed on social media, then check your social media handle again. It's either you are not an active user or participant, or you have your own <laughs> uh, antidote to the fire coming out from the kitchen of social media. In fact, uh, let me quickly say that in 2016, I remember writing an article addressed to IPOB members, advising them on how to go about the agitations and activities to reduce loss of uh, human lives. Well, needless to say that more than half of the commenters on that post misunderstood me and ended up bringing abuses on me, calling me sabo or whatever. I'm sure all of us know the meaning of that, uh, <laughs> of, of sabo, so to say. But that was, that is, those are one of the negativities of, uh, social media. Having said that, that does not mean that there are no good sides or no positive sides of uh, social media which could be readily harnessed and put into practical and uh, proficient use. For example, let me quickly say that as at November 24, 2020, there are are over 2.7 billion active monthly users of Facebook, which is acclaimed the biggest social media network in the world, followed by Twitter. Twitter has about 330 million monthly active users and 145 million daily active users. And then it also statistics also shows that 63% of all Twitter users worldwide are between the ages of 35 and 36. The ratio of female to male Twitter users is roughly one to two, which means which means our our female counterparts are beating us. I wonder what we are doing with the male users. They are beating us almost two to one. That is a good three points if it were football. Having said that again, it's, uh, in Nigeria, there are about 27.5 million users of Facebook. Twitter has about 2 million users in Nigeria. If we combine this output or these statistics we have just reeled out, it is taken for granted that Facebook is number one most popular uh, media platform followed by Twitter. Now, if we combine all the users of these social media platforms, we can see that social media is no longer a pushover in any sphere of human development. Let us quickly mention WhatsApp. WhatsApp has about 1.6 billion users globally. About 96 million WhatsApp applications we are downloaded in February 2020 alone. WhatsApp is available in more than 180 countries and in more than 60 different languages. Facebook is leading the pack with 42.89%, Twitter 39.81%. Uh, then YouTube 
3.67%, Instagram, 3.18%, LinkedIn, 0.33%. If we combine all these users, we'll see that about half of the population of humankind are on social media actively. In fact, in 2016, it was widely acclaimed that Donald Trump won his election, election as US president riding on the back of the Twitter horse. It is also no secret that social media was instrumental to the organization and coordination of the recent NSAS protests and which raised across the country, Nigeria. Also, we should not neglect the impact of social media oriented economic growth. Every day, new social media induced millionaires are produced. One such uh, popular uh, social media achiever is our own young Emanuela. I'm sure that is a household name. In fact, recently she completed a mouth watering house for her parents uh, with promises of a mansion in view which shows that social media is not just for the elderly or for the, or for the youths, but even children are keying in to the uh, facilities and the possibilities provided or enhanced by social media. Another area of interest is education. In fact, as we speak, some schools are holding their class sessions via social media. That is interesting, especially during the lockdown when schools were under lock and key. Many schools continue to offer education to our children using social media platforms. Let, let it also be known to us that it is credit to social media that we are gathered today via Zoom, which is one of the arms of social media. To cap it up all, the young man who made it possible, my presence here possible today, I met him on social media too. So who can dare now question the power of social media in human capital development? If we talk of business, many of our businessmen are buying their goods in far, from far away China using social media platforms. And many more are selling their products using the same. We from online journalism, journalism sector, see social media as both a sister and a partner, as it helps propagate our, our news faster than would ordinarily be imagined. If I publish an article on my platform, Elomba News, or Elomba.com, as alternatively known, immediately I paste the link on social media it spreads like wildfire to all nooks and crannies of the world. We, one can then confidently say that social media has shrunk the world and reduced it to a spiraling global village. You can imagine my pain, how it hurts well, me and my colleagues when we hear that our governments at some levels are sponsoring a bill to gag social or new media. I mean, what are they, what is, what is not understood about the impact and the positivities of social media? I will therefore emphasize that instead of any reasonable government to harass or attempt to gag social media, they should rather seek means to harness the positivities, the positive potentials of social media for human development. They should ask themselves, what are these billions of social media subscribers seeing that we are not seeing? And find ways to key in to this moving human train. Before I go, I will want to join all participants here to pay tribute to Professor C.O.E. Omoleri, KSJIFAS, whose legacy has lived on and continues to speak for him. My profound respect also goes to Professor Viola Omoleri, who has ensured that the embers of the legacies of Professor C.O. Omoleri are constantly found. We of Elomba.com say thank you and have a happy deliberation. Thank you very much, um, Tim, um, for your 
thank you very much for your for sharing with us. And uh, indeed, I think uh, it, the message is clear that we need to ex and, um, explore the positives and enhance these positives uh, instead of focusing on the negatives and trying to use them as excuses to gag uh, some of the development uh, in social media. Um, you know, I'm not alone on this. The uh, able uh, uh, chairman, um, Professor Azinge, is still here with us, and uh, would like our chairman to. Um, it is uh, around to mute himself uh, uh, to join in on the conversations. I'm sure some of the comments uh, made so far. Uh, he would have uh, uh, some insight to share as well. Prof, sir. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I've been following and listening attentively. Firstly, I must uh, commend and congratulate the guest speaker for a very lucid and well-articulated presentation and also all the people that have intervened one way or the other. Uh, I must say that we have benefited immeasurably from all of them, one way or the other, their insights and the perspective that they shared. Uh, I believe that the last speaker just touched on something that I consider very germane and very, very fundamental, and that is the issue of the social media bill. And the guest speaker alluded to that one way or the other when he talked about maybe some people that believe that there might be argument in favor of regulation of social media. But there are also other contrary arguments. And I, I, I think that from all the positives that have been enumerated, in the course of our conversation, there seemed to be no clear court justification for the social media bill in the way and manner in the light that governments seem to be thinking of it. Consequently, it is for those who are concerned and the stakeholders to make sure that they bring pressure to bear on respective members of the National Assembly and also all the other stakeholders, so that at any point in time, if at all the bill is subjected to any scrutiny in terms of public hearing, that we have more than enough people there to shoot down that bill. Because I believe that it may not be and should not be in the ultimate interest of our people and of our country. And also to say that the perspective that was dwelled on, especially the Akuluna aspect of it, which is Royal Majesty, also dilated upon that it is something that we should also be thinking seriously of in terms of economic renaissance of our people in Igbo land. That is very, very fundamental as well. How do we usher that in? I remember that about four or five years ago at uh, Uturu at the World Igbo Summit, I delivered a, a keynote address along that line. And uh, since then, the matter has been on the front burner of national discourse, especially as it relates to the Igbos. That we should also be thinking of seriously. But I've always wondered Anytime I leave Abuja and go to Lagos, I find myself around Lekki. And I can say without contradiction that the whole of Lekki is dominated and peopled by the Igbos. So everybody you see there, good majority, 99.9% .9 of the people there owning houses, doing business are Igbos. Not to talk about the other parts. Uh, and occasionally I wonder how realistic it might be for such people to be asked to bring their resources or more or less their skills and what have you back home. How will that 
obviously resonate and how will they cope. But I know that it is not a matter of return home. It's a matter of trying to make sure that given percentages of whatever you have should also be invested in your own homeland. Whatever it is, whether it is in the in real estate, whether it is in any other sphere of human endeavor, make sure that you don't forget your home so that you will ultimately ensure that no matter what, you, you, you have a pride of place and you have been able to help to develop Igbo land. I am also particularly pleased with the announcement made by the Director General of the National Inland Waterways recently that they are trying to revive and resuscitate the Onitsha port. For us, that is a very welcome development, if at all, whether it's going to be through Portacot or whether it's going to be through Coco or any other part of South, South or thereabout, that ultimately ships can now bet along that line or if they bet in Portacot or anywhere in Calabar, they can still navigate and come to, to our nature port. If that is done, it means that in terms of importations and what have you, or even exportation, our people may not need necessarily to down travel all the way to Lagos or to carry luggages to Lagos. We can do so many things using the Onitsha port, if obviously in play. So to that extent, we keep pushing. It is for us to keep pushing, putting pressure on the government of the day to also ensure that we get the best we can get from government. Whilst we are still advocating for Igbo presidency, let us ensure that we get the best we can get. What of rail line transportation? Are we obviously on queue one way or the other, amongst other things? I believe that these are conversations that our political leaders should champion and lead advocacy one way or the other. And all this can well be through the instrumentality of social media so that we can harness our thoughts in that regard and see how we can push. Because if we're able to achieve that, we'll be able to ensure that there is a lot of economic resources coming to Igbo land and that will help us to revitalize whatever that is ailing or whatever that is not in play. So I want to yield so that other, people's will, all, other people will also intervene but I must say without fear of contradiction, that has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And I personally have benefited immeasurably from it. So I want to thank all those that spoke before me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, we really appreciate you um, for the very incisive uh, uh, take on the issues and bringing in you know, additional aspects and questions, key questions on um, how exactly can we help or can we drive conversations to help persons bring back their skills and um, their resource, resources back home um, to Ibu land to help uh, generate economic activity and develop our land um, beyond what we have or what is ongoing at the moment. Uh, you talked about the situation whereby people should look into percentages. So a simple question about uh, this is what I have or this is what I am worth. What percentage of what I have or what I am worth is in Igbo land? So a simple question like that can actually be powerful, a powerful driving force to get people to start thinking about how exactly they are contributing to the development of uh, our homeland. So thank you very much, Prof. Your comments were very incisive. Uh, we still have uh, Professor... Uh, Guinea